If you're ready to install or buy a budget AVR audio video receiver, here's what you need to know. First, you need to understand what these numbers represent. You'll see them all the time when referring to theater surround sound speaker design. In short, these are the speakers or channels in your surround sound configuration. So the first number is for the primary channels at or near your head level. The second number is the number of bass speakers. And the third number is the number of speakers in other parts of the room, such as overhead. So stereo sound or 2.0 is two speakers, a left and a right channel or speaker with zero subwoofers. When you see 5.1, it represents five primary channels around you. One center speaker in front of you for the dialogue and two front left and right speakers. The two side or back left and right speakers with one subwoofer. In a 5.2 configuration, the only difference is two bass speakers instead of one. You can also have a 5.1.2, the same as the 5.1, but it also has two height channels or two more speakers that are placed at the ceiling level to have sound that comes from above you. When you see 7.2.4, you have six surround speakers, one center channel for dialogue, two sub speakers, and four speakers above you needed for Atmos and DTSX surround technologies. If a movie is mixed for seven speakers and you only have five, the system will move the sound to other sets of speakers making newer movies backwards compatible. Another thing to point out about these numbers is that with some of the newer receivers, them having so many more channels that can be assigned to different speakers, you're starting to see systems like a 17.4, and this is a system with five primary speakers and four subwoofers, and then all the other 12 speakers can be assigned to any location in the room, so they just group them all into the first number. Now let's take a look at the back of an audio video receiver. First, to identify if it's an audio video receiver or AVR, it should have an HDMI port such as these. You'll be able to identify if it's a standard HD 1080p port or a 4K or 8K by looking at the information surrounding the HDMI out port. Don't worry if you don't have a 4K projector. These ports are usually backwards compatible, so you can use a 1080p projector even if its port is labeled 4K. If you don't see HDMI ports, then the system is too old for today's home theater. You can also note on the back that the speaker impedance might be indicated. It's nice to have a system that will handle speakers from four to 16 ohms. Every system has a manual that can be found online by looking up the model number. I highly recommend looking up the configuration and the capabilities of the receiver before purchasing it. The manual will indicate what types of speakers, what types of surround sound modes, and the overall power of the unit. It should also display how it can be configured. Now let's take a look at the back of a 5.1 receiver. You can identify that it's a 5.1 system by the speaker wire connections because it will have a center channel speaker, and a set of front left and right speakers, and then a set of surround left and right speakers. Just as a side note, I would avoid systems that have these clip-like wire connections for the main speakers. They are usually found on lower quality units, and they have a tendency to break. But if you have the round type, as seen here, and have a few of the clip ones like this in a second zone, it might indicate that this system has height channels, which allows you to add speakers above you and indicates a higher quality system with more configuration options. Now take a look at this 7.1 receiver. Everything that I mentioned earlier for the 5.1 system will also apply to the 7.1 receiver as well, but the difference will be the addition of two surround speakers, as you can see here on my old system and here on my new system. Though these two systems are both 7.2 receivers, what makes them different are the listening modes that each one can decode. The one on top is a 7.2 surround sound receiver and has the option to use two height speakers, which technically would make this a 7.2.2 receiver, but does not have the Dolby Atmos or DTSX listening modes. It still sounds awesome when playing movies that are coded in Dolby Atmos. See my other video for listening modes. This is very important. Out of the box, it is common for your system to be configured for a 5.1 setup and you need to go into the settings of your system and tell it to use 7.1 setup instead of 5.1 to take advantage of the other speakers. You may have also noted the standardized color coding of these speakers, 
green for the center channel, red for the right front, white for the front left, etc. Just for comparison, let's take a moment and look at a more advanced 15.4 Dolby Atmos and DTS X receiver. All the other information applies here as well, but you will have noticed all the extra connections for the speakers. Notice that the main five surround sound speakers are just like the older systems with the addition of all the other connectors that can be assigned to different positions based on the configuration of your room. You decide where you're going to mount the speakers on the walls and the ceilings, and then use the on-screen settings or app to assign each of the speakers to their location. This will let the receiver split the sound up based on the actual speaker location in the room. Also with this expensive receiver, you can connect four subwoofers, and with these connectors, you can add more amps to expand the system. Cool, yes, necessary, not really. Now, just to be clear, the main surround sound speakers in the Dolby Atmos or a DTS-X system are still the 5.1 or 7.1 primary speakers. This is where 80 to 90% of the surround sound is focused and the rest of the sound is coming from other speakers. There are other special connections and features that aren't used as much that I haven't discussed, but here are a few more points that are good to know. I like my receivers to have a Bluetooth built in for listening to music. Most of the devices today can stream music to our receivers if they have a built-in Bluetooth. And you will recognize a newer receiver also because it will have a network port to connect to your home network. This lets you update the system and integrate it with your other devices. So to sum things up, I hope you now understand what you're looking at. And when it comes to finding a good surround sound receiver, if $6,000 for a 15.4 Dolby Atmos receiver is not in your budget, you now know you don't need one to enjoy great movie experience. Just for the record, I have a Denon 7.2 Atmos receiver that I paid $120 for and I love it.